Hey y'all. So this is our war against J.A. and I am not playing Doom today. Funnily enough, I am playing Apocalypse for probably the second time in, god, I don't know, three, four months? I've just always had such strong Apocalypse players in my battle group, and he's often on defense, or has been on defense. It's just been a very long time for me. But I am extremely comfortable with him. Um, I lean on him in Gauntlet more than anyone else. And these are really good fights for him. So let's kind of talk about the strategy. Main thing against Thing is to remember that your heavy is going to be net negative for rock stacks. So you are going to um, trigger that bleed and then still hit twice. And so it's minus one per heavy. You want to keep in mind the net effect and not just think about it as a bleed removal tool, but it can help you balance things and keep him at 15 for specials more reliably. You can also heavy counter his specials with Apocalypse pretty easily, but I recommend not really bothering unless you need to. But here, it did kind of help to do that, because that meant that I didn't have to parry him and then knock him down. I could just immediately get the knockdown, throw the special three, and that's why this is a good matchup. I know I'm definitely not the first one to do this. Obviously, he goes into protection afterwards. But very similarly to using uh, Doom against Hulkling, the... Th theory of this fight is that it doesn't really matter what you do in between the special threes because the special threes with the big furies are going to be enough. Now of course it is important to be able to control rock stacks so blocking strategically, shortening combos and leaving space for future combos like you just saw me do there um, is an important skill, something worth dueling for with and without the heavies. But as long as you can do that, there's not a whole lot to this fight. We go ahead and... Uh, I just like to wait a little bit longer than I have to to make sure the Fury kicks in. Then I throw the special three. I forget if this actually finished it. It might. Not quite. Okay, so we have 6%. We're going to be waiting out protection. That's fine. He'll throw this eventually, there we go. Yeah, of course I heavy counter to just make sure we don't have to worry about the rock stacks because we're just trying to um, get him down that last 4%. Mistimed that counter there, uh, glad I didn't get parried. <laughs> and we weren't doing enough damage through the protection, I didn't uh, get it down, so I go ahead and push him to 15 again. This is something that I've practiced many, many times, is making sure I can do that unblockable special one dex in the corner. I think that's absolutely essential for taking thing anywhere. And we move right on. So I was splitting that path with somebody else. My next fight is Nick on 23, the scared stiff mini boss that roots you and also has bubble shield and power focus. Now, of course, power focus makes Nick easier because you can always push him to the special too, and especially with a mutant, that means his charges are pretty easy to control. However, Bubble Shield obviously makes Nick harder, <laughs> because he will have access to his special one more often if you are not um, controlling things properly, and it can go unblockable in the middle of it, even if it doesn't on activation. Now, you'll notice throughout here I use a fair number of re-parries. Nick has not my favorite moveset to re-parry, but you can definitely get it down. It's a very important skill for battlegrounds, for managing his charges in general, and so you're going to be seeing quite a bit of that here. The other thing to remember about this fight is that because Power Focus 2 reduces their combat power above two bars, you don't have to risk getting rooted, baiting out a special two. You can hit them safely, you know, within reason, and it's not that hard to keep things under wraps. So I go ahead and push him over a bar here. I think I, yeah, I parry one more time. The concussion actually meant that we didn't trigger bubble shield there. That's important to keep track of. You can't just count. 
you also have to watch. But with that in mind, we know that we have one more safe parry um, before he goes unblockable. Gonna be kind of tricky to do it while he's stun immune, so we just sidestep directly into the special two again, and down he goes. I've said it a few times recently on stream, I'll say it again here. The cable synergy is kind of dumb. <laughs> Apocalypse could have done both of these fights without the ability to start it for genetic code. They just would have taken longer and the power backs would have been less effective. Maybe that world would have made more sense. But for now, um, those were fun. We move on to Gallon here. Now this one you do truly need the power backs and a fair amount of prowess for. Because the only reason that this is a good fight is because the power backs give you an advantage on bars of power, which allows you to control Gallon's mass. Because we don't have any extra power gain, we don't have um, any method of neutralize, the only thing we have is a concussion that stops some of his buffs. You see he only gained a little bit of mass there. And we have the power backs, which are a form of power gain. And that's what makes this work well. Uh, I shouldn't have heavied twice in a row here or there. You're going to see me take a little bit more block damage there, but not the end of the world. We could throw a special one and do more damage, but we're sticking to special twos because that power advantage is the most important part here. It's not about how much damage any one special does, it's about how close it gets us to our next one so we can keep knocking him down and keep him away from 100 mass. Because note that if we had thrown a special one, we probably would have been short on power there and he probably would have entered harvest. And I don't want to rely on the concussion that much. Now, as a reminder, the reason that Apocalypse can parry freely here, and the reason that Apocalypse can use Mr. Fantastic pre-fights, is because he stops the Purify from the node and turns off Conflictor. So very, very good counter. And then we have a very simple one here. If you want to turn off Spidey Supreme entirely, you use a buff immune, but you don't have to. You can fight him with almost anybody by baiting out the heavy and triggering the miss, Reed doesn't even need to do that, because this is a node where you can stun him, and we are just going to play this all heavies. That's all there is to it. Um, the one thing to note is that if you're not comfortable throwing the heavy or the special two into a um, into a stun, because sometimes those are a bit tight, and you uh, worry that that might get blocked. Then what you can do is you can do what I said you would do with somebody else. And you can, after knocking him down with a heavy, you can parry medium, intentionally cause the miss, wait it out, knock him down again with a heavy, and then parry medium special too. You'll have enough time to do that, and that will give you just a little bit more security to make sure that he doesn't have time to block the special. But with all that in mind, Spidey Supreme does not have a lot of health. And if I remember correctly, that fight took 19 hits. Yep. Each special two is three, so that means that was 13 heavies and two special twos. And that was all she wrote. So we did not win this war. Um, it was pretty close. Not embarrassed uh, with our performance. We definitely gave up some that we would have preferred not to, but it was fine. It was a very competitive alliance, regularly on the podium. This is not the kind of opponent that we expect ourselves to beat on a regular basis, so no point in getting bent out of shape about it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it was fun to dust off Apocalypse, and always interesting to fight somebody else on 54 with Reed. <laughs> and until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.